Yo, Miyasan Konnichiwa. Okay, it has been a while since the last time I've uploaded a video on my YouTube channel. Uh, to be honest, I need to get used to this format again, but I'm trying to force myself to post a little bit more on YouTube. Maybe that's going to be one of my goals in 2023 because I've just posted like a questions box on my Instagram story. So I'm going to be answering a couple of questions. First things first, I need to head to Shibuya to go have lunch because I'm hungry. I didn't eat anything yet. And then I'm going to go meet a couple of my friends. So let's go. So I just made it to Shibuya. Uh, first question I got is, do I edit any photos or videos on my phone? Uh, and if so, what app do I use? So photos never, because I always take my photos in RAW on my camera. So I use Lightroom to edit all my photos on my laptop. And for videos, I feel like nowadays, like 90% of my videos are made on my phone. Actually, like all the reels and like the stories that I post on Instagram, I would say like 90% are made on my phone. Made and edited on my phone. I just use InShot because it's easy, it's quick but there's plenty of other apps out there like CapCut or VN that are pretty useful as well. All right, so I've made it to my sushi spot. Uh, this is a very simple and cheap sushi place, but this is my go-to because it's good quality, cheap. Or of the Seibu building and it's called Katsu. It used to be called Katsumidori. So I'm already getting a bunch of questions, but through all those questions, I'm starting to realize that there's actually a lot of people that don't quite know me yet. So I thought it would be appropriate if I do a quick introduction about myself. So if you don't know me, if you haven't been following for a while, my name is Jerome. I am half French, half Japanese. My mom is Japanese. My dad is French. I'm currently living in New York and I'm working as a content creator, uh, primarily doing like photography, videography on social media, uh, selling that to different clients. That's how I get to travel all around the world because I'm based in New York, but probably like a good 50% of the time, or maybe more. I'm actually away from New York, I'm like traveling to different countries and working for different clients. But all this is like pretty new. I've been doing this sustainably as a business for about like two years now. Uh, before that, I used to work in sports. I was working in sponsorships for a football team called Paris Saint-Germain. So yeah, I was pretty set on doing that for the rest of my life, for the rest of my career. But through the pandemic, through COVID and everything, stuff started to change around. And for the past two years, or a little bit more, I mean, I've been doing like photography and content for maybe like four or five years now. But again, sustainably as a business, I've been doing this for maybe two years, maybe just short of two years. But yeah, currently I'm in Tokyo spending the winter holidays over here. I'm going to be staying here at least until January. For now, I'm just like enjoying uh, the winter holidays in Tokyo, which is always nice. Right, so I think I completely messed up the audio on the first day because my microphone jack was plugged into the earphone jack and not the microphone in the hall. So hopefully the sound is a little bit better now, but I just wanted to quickly share this. If you come to Shibuya and you want to enjoy a free view on the Shibuya crossing, you can come to the building called Shikarie. On the 11th floor, you've got these very cool windows where you can see all the way till the Shibuya crossing over there. And it's totally free. You can also go down to the 10th floor. You've got some amazing views as well. This is the cool thing about Japan. There's literally vending machines everywhere. So at any time, you just get yourself a coffee. What's up? It's so simple. Right, so hopefully this is good. I've screenshotted all the questions, so I'm gonna go there one by one. So someone asked me, you clearly love Japan. You look the happiest when you're there. Why not just move here? So I absolutely love Japan for like so many different reasons. And every single time I'm here, I'm reminded how convenient life is over here. And every single time I'm not here, I just, you know, miss Japan. I miss like the convenience of the whole city because Tokyo and Japan is pretty much made on convenience. Everything is convenient over here. Like you just saw the vending machines. There's convenience stores like literally everywhere in every street corner. Uh, there's clean toilets all over the city. And I definitely would consider moving here at some point in my life. But at least for now, from a strategic standpoint, from my business, it makes way more sense for me to be 
based in New York, where I can make some connections, network with some people, some brands, some clients. I wish that this year in 2022, I was perhaps based in like Dubai, would have been way more convenient for me to like travel to places like Iran, Saudi, Qatar, uh, Afghanistan, all those places that I've been to that are just way more easier to access through Dubai than it is from New York. But you know, business opportunities in New York is amazing all the time. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with New York for the moment. All right, next question. So now I'm gonna to try to attempt to answer. Uh, the number one question that I get is, how do I get paid to travel all across the world and to create content and to do all these like fun gigs that I'm doing? The number one, the most important thing to remember is nobody gets paid to travel. Nobody gets paid to travel. People get paid for other skills than travel. For example, if you're a photographer, if you're a videographer, if you're a drone pilot, if you're a writer, if you're a journalist, etc. Now, in my case, for example, I sell my photography and videography services to different clients. I do mainly social media work, so I create content for hotels, for airlines, for tourism boards all across the world so that they can use it on their social media. On the side, I also sell my visibility, so I do a lot of like, partnership with different brands in order to post on my social to give them visibility, to give them a brand image, to create content for them that they can also use on their social. And on top of that, I try to sell that as a package in order to sell um, usage rights for my images or for my videos so that the brands can actually use those content, use those assets and push them on social so that they get more visibility. That's a quick example of what I do. I also work a lot with this group called Beautiful Destination. They also have a lot of like tourism boards and hotel clients. Um, and that's the reason why like, I get sent to different places in order to create content. Now, the difficult thing is how do I get started? It's not easy. For me, for years and years, I started creating content. Uh, since like four or five years ago, I picked up a camera and I was just like practicing and creating some random content in New York just because it made me happy. When Instagram launched Instagram Reels, that's when my stuff started picking up more and I started getting noticed a little bit more by different brands and agencies out there. Now, that's one way to do it if you get a lot of visibility on social media. People notice you, people notice your work and you're gonna be able to connect with those different people and they're gonna offer you different opportunities to be able to travel, etc. if that's your niche. Now, second, you can also network by yourself, which is a little bit more difficult, but proactively reaching out to different brands, uh, searching out the right contact on LinkedIn, and saying like, hey, this is who I am, uh, this is what I have to offer, photography, videography, social media, whatever it is you want to offer, and you know, you pitch something that you would wanna uh, work together with or collaborate with on a different project. Now, the other thing that's very important is that I did not get any type of like social media or photography work until my work actually came to a level where it was like actually marketable. Like brands would see my content and be like, okay, cool, we wanna associate ourselves with that person, that content creator. We want him, we want this content creator to create some content with our products, whether that be uh, DSLR cameras or like 360 cameras, uh, lifestyle products, or like being able to travel to a different destination in order to promote that destination. And this is a harsh reality that not many people like to hear. If your content is not good, Unfortunately, people are not gonna hire you for that. It's very competitive out there, social media, photography, videography is very saturated, so you have to be able to make sure that your content is different to others. If your content is the same as everyone else, if you just follow the trends and you don't bring in any sort of like creativity to your product, then unfortunately, brands, people are gonna see you as the same as everyone else. Your content needs to be good, and once your content is good, reach out to people, network, connect with different brands, different clients, in order to get some gigs so that you can get paid in order to travel. All right, so hopefully that helps. All right, so the other question that I'm getting a lot is how do I upload such good quality stories and reels on my Instagram? Well, I've done this many years ago, but first of all, of course, turn on high quality upload. I think that's somewhere in the settings. I've done it years ago, uh, so I'm, I don't remember exactly where it is. But second of all, when I post my stories on Instagram, I always make sure to record with the back camera, even if I'm recording my face like this, rather than the front camera. Why? Because the back camera is wider, it shows the environment where you're in, uh, the camera is much sharper as well, uh, it catches the noise way better, and it's just the whole part of the storytelling to show the environment in which you're in. So this is how I record my stories. This is not how you should be doing it. Now, you're gonna tell yourself like, yeah, but if you don't look at the screen, if you just look at the back camera, you can't see yourself. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who cares about what you look like on camera. The most important thing is that you look into the camera, you show the environment, you just put yourself dead straight in the middle, 
and then people are gonna watch it, it's gonna be much more enjoyable to watch rather than a very close-up story that you record like of your face with the front-facing camera. So always use the back camera. When are you coming back to New York? Probably end of January. Hopefully I can do a meetup or something like a photo walk at some point during the year. Uh, maybe when it's gonna be warmer in January, it's gonna be still pretty cold in New York. So I'm probably not gonna do it in January, but hopefully towards the middle of the year, maybe in spring. Do you get prompted by security at airports for your tripod? Tripod never, because tripod I always put it in my suitcase. So I never have a problem with my tripod. My drone on the other hand is the thing that I have to be careful about depending on the country that I go to. If you do travel for drone, make sure you check the different regulation depending on the country because some countries like Jordan or Morocco is gonna be pretty strict. Would you go back to Afghanistan? 100% yes, Afghanistan is my favorite trip this year. Arguably my favorite trip in my whole life. It was so different and you know, I felt like coming back from Afghanistan I grew up as a human being. I became more knowledgeable about a country that's so um, mediatized in a very negative way. Uh, there's a lot to learn about Afghanistan and those kind of trips where I feel like it's very intellectually stimulating are my favorite. So definitely 100% go back to Afghanistan inshallah next year. Next question is, what is your experience traveling around the world during COVID time? So during COVID, it was actually very difficult. Um, during the main chunk of 2020, I did not have any type of like travel opportunities. I was just staying at home and doing some online courses. But once we were able to start traveling again, I started traveling to different places like Mexico. I went to Jordan, to Tanzania, uh, came back to Japan as well in 2021. Um, and the amazing thing is that some of the locations that I've been to that are usually packed and crowded, I managed to get them completely empty. So like Petra, for example, the famous place in Jordan, I got it completely empty. I was able to come back to Japan as well because of my nationality. So I went to Kyoto, to Fushimi which I got completely empty as well. It felt absolutely surreal. New York as well, well, I was already in New York, but you know, I also got that completely empty. So that was definitely fun to shoot. When is your birthday? March 5th, I'll be turning 30 on March 5th, 2023. Damn, I'm old. What's your favorite place in Japan? I don't specifically have like one favorite place in Japan. Obviously Tokyo is like, feels like home to me. But every year we try to go to Mount Fuji, somewhere around the surrounding area. So like Fuji Yoshida or like Kawaguchiko, for example. It's always relaxing and I still do like a little road trip with Koki. What's the most difficult truth as a travel content creator slash storyteller? I'd say the most difficult thing is that a lot of people don't see all the work that goes behind all the content that we post. Um, when you follow people on social media, you only see like the most beautiful like sunsets, you only see the most beautiful uh, breakfast and you know, uh, luxury hotels and stuff like that, like life is good, blah, blah, but you just don't know how much work goes behind like planning all the trips and like planning all your content and like executing your content, editing anything. So outside of all these moments that you see us like, you know, traveling across the world and like having a good time, there's actually a lot of work, very little sleep. I like barely sleep like four or five hours whenever I travel. Constantly try to edit on the go, produce some content, make sure that I deliver all my deliverables for my clients as soon as possible. And all of that while planning the next trip as well. So when I travel back to back, for example, this year I traveled from Iceland to Afghanistan, which was two very, very different countries. That was probably the most like difficult to adjust between the two countries. And I had very little time in between. And still in between when I was on my layover in London, I had to shoot a client's uh, work. Uh, it was a real that I created for Sony Xperia. But I had to shoot that on my layover in London. I had like nine hours. So I stepped out the airport, shot that quickly, and then back to the airport to head to Afghanistan, which is also a trip that I needed a lot of organization for. So that was a little bit complicated and stressful, but you know, in the end, we made it happen. What keeps you motivated in your work? Probably the fact that I'm still telling myself I'm very young. I'm 29 right now, almost 30, but still very young. Like mentally and physically, I'm still at an age where I can like move around and like, you know, survive with very little sleep. I don't necessarily need like, the most comfortable uh, stay. I can literally sleep on the floor, like give me a towel or something, and I'll sleep on the floor. I don't need luxury. I don't need um, the most comfortable stays every time. So yeah, I'd say like, for now I'm still young. At some point I'm gonna reach a, a stage where I'm gonna be like, okay, I could do with a little bit more comfort, but you know, I just keep going because I can travel the world, like have fun. Your best prime lens. If I had to choose one, the 35 1.4, that's the best prime lens I use for all portraits and streets. It was very handy in Afghanistan. I took a bunch of like street portraits of people, but even with the planned 
uh, portrait session that I do in New York or in Tokyo, 35 is always like I could do a whole shoot with only that one lens. Okay, so a lot of questions about my upbringings and where I lived, what languages I speak. So I moved around a lot uh, growing up. I lived in multiple countries, which is also why I speak several languages. So I speak English, French, and Japanese fluently. I also learned Mandarin Chinese when I was living in China. I lived there for six years when I was younger. And I also learned Spanish when I was in university in England uh, for about two years. So my Spanish and my Mandarin is just a like good conversational level, uh, but my English, French, and Japanese are fluent. If you had to get rid of one of your passports, which one would it be? Uh, now it's difficult because all my passports are pretty powerful, but I think the easy answer would be the American one, simply based on the fact that uh, the United States imposes a double taxation after a certain uh, salary cap. So anywhere you live around the world, you have to pay your taxes, even if I move to Dubai, for example, where you do not need to pay taxes. As an American, you need to pay your taxes in America. So yeah, the people who have the dual citizenship between the American passport and another nationality tend to do that after a certain stage in their life because of the double tax issue. Have you traveled to Mongolia? Yes, I have. In 2005, I think I was like 12 years old or something at that time with my parents. Uh, we were living in China at that time, so it really wasn't that far for us. And we traveled to Mongolia, but of course at that time, at 12 years old, I wasn't a photographer, I wasn't a content creator, I wasn't the same type of traveler that I am right now, so I would absolutely love to go back to Mongolia. Hopefully in 2023, I also have a bunch of other countries on my list in 2023, like Uzbekistan, Iraq, hopefully I can do like Yemen as well, and hit some other countries that I know very little about. That is the best way to get to know different countries. How are you so invested in football? It amazes me. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, football is my whole life. I grew up watching and playing football like really religiously, and I really wanted to make this my career, and it was for like a long time. I'll probably go back to sports at some point. For now, I'm happy doing like what I'm doing and traveling the world, but I started my career working in sports. I worked for Paris Saint-Germain, I worked in Singapore uh, in the national stadium up there doing like marketing and sponsorships. I did the same thing for Paris Saint-Germain as well. And once I joined Paris Saint-Germain, I thought that, okay, I'm probably gonna keep on doing what I'm doing right now uh, for at least most of my career. COVID changed stuff around, but at some point, maybe if I want to settle down a little bit more and stop traveling extensively the way I do, maybe I'm going to go back into sports. Passage Saint-Germain and other teams would definitely be at the top of the list of the companies that I would want to work for again. Okay, last question, and I'm going to end it on this one. How do you get more followers on Instagram? Now, I see a lot of people on social media giving advice on how to grow a following on social media. A lot of these advice are useless in my opinion they would tell you like you have to put this kind of hashtag you have to use like the poll or like the slider feature or like the questions feature on your stories and like you engage in this way that way now you only need two things create good content regularly that's all you need to do but by good content i actually mean like you have to focus on making sure that your content is good unique and it's going to catch people's attention and then that's going to drive more traffic onto your page people are going to follow you if they actually think that there's a reason for them to follow if you offer value if it's entertaining if it's uh, providing some knowledge for example teaching people some stuff i do a lot of like photography tips for example i got a lot of uh, traction on my social media for that I got a lot of traction on my social media for like running around and creating unique content that nobody else creates so that's also another way you can grow your following on social media make sure you are unique and your content is good and you post regularly that's it right so it is getting a little bit dark I need to edit like a bunch of content some photos and some videos I need to edit this YouTube video as well so I'm gonna go sit down in a cafe edit my stuff and hopefully this Q&A was good. Hopefully this also motivates me to post a little bit more on YouTube and to be more active. So I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.